Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch. I'm Michael Knapp, Michael Knapp Leather. Well, first off, just I wanted to say thank you again to everybody who participated in the drawing and to let the winners know this past week I shipped everything out to you guys. So again, congratulations on uh, John Bell winning the watch. He's in the UK. I've sent that out to you and the two mugs to Jack Daniels and my buddy Dan Baldwin in Oregon. So really, again, thanks a lot. We'll probably do another drawing here in a couple months. So you guys all get involved on that one. Today's episode, a little bit different. I've never made one of these on the show before. And I used to make a ton of more things that were on my website, leather goods. And since I've really buckled down and kind of focused on watch straps, leather watch straps, alligator, shell cordovan, Cremexel leather straps, uh, calfskin leather straps, I've really gotten away from wallets. And I had promised a friend of mine a wallet some months ago. And I thought I had one in inventory still, but I guess I had sold it. So here I promised him one and I'm seeing him on Monday um, coming up this next Monday. And so I thought, man, I gotta make him. I gotta make him a wallet. So what I did, one of my favorite straps that I have ever made is this black shell cordovan strap with red stitching for my Christopher Ward Trident Mark III. It's the C60 Professional 600. It's the dive watch, black dial, 40 millimeter. Love the watch. So we're gonna go in a little more depth on this watch. But this strap I made several months ago now. And what I did was make my friend Greg a wallet that matches the, the strap. All right, this, this is what inspired me to make his wallet. So you're gonna see me hand make this wallet on today's episode. And we're also gonna go into some depth on the watch. Right after the intro, stick around, we're gonna get right at it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Strap a Watch. And here is my Christopher Ward Trident C60 Mark III. And there's the with the bracelet on. I'll tell you, their bracelets are tremendous with the quick release lug pin system that you can just put them on, take them off. And there is the Shell Cordovan strap that I made. I think I made this on like my second episode of Strap a Watch. I'm not 100% sure, but it was something like that. And here you can see me cutting out the Shell Cordovan for Greg's wallet. And, uh, you know, I'll go into more about this, this wallet. But here's right off of the Christopher Ward website. And I got to tell you. This is a tremendous value for this watch. It, it really is. You know, you saw it was, what, 895 with the bracelet. And their bracelets are just awesome. And there's all the specs. If you want to check out the specs, you can always push pause, rewind, and, and review those for yourself or visit the Christopher Ward website. Um, they have some other newer models out. I was just checking it out because I, I put that little piece on there. And uh, there's, there's some just really cool watches. They, I, I dig their designs. $7.95 with the rubber strap. So if you're looking to maybe save some money and you know you're going to be switching out straps anyways and maybe getting a NATO strap or a leather strap, right? Um, then yeah, I mean, go ahead, get yourself one with the rubber strap, but I'll tell you what, you're gonna take that rubber strap off because it is really uncomfortable. I've tried them on and whoa, um, not comfortable at all, very stiff. And it's like, you know, it's like for diving, man. You know, that's, that's what this is really, this is a true dive watch. It's rated at 600 meters. So, uh, it's a true dive watch, and, and I wear my Christopher Wards a lot. There's my favorite favorite product, Tokenol. Everybody knows that. I always talk about Tokenol. 
And I'm just doing this on, on the backing here within the wallet. I do that with a lot of my products, but it helps to make everything real slick and it compresses down all those fibers. And uh, that was the Shell Cordovan side. This is the Cremexel. So you can see how it, it's, it gets applied so much different depending on what kind of leather you're using. So, and it's more important for the Cremexel right there. You can kind of see it's, it's Cremexel is a lot more fibrous. And one of the reasons with uh, Shell Cordovan, why it's so expensive, it takes six months to tan that that leather. Uh, Shell Cordovan, if you don't know about this leather, what it is, it's horsehide. And think of right above the hips on the horse, okay? And they come in about an average two and a half square feet. That's it of what they are called chips. They're kind of egg-shaped. Um, and these are from Italy. This is an Italian Shell Cordovan. The most famous Shell Cordovan is out of Chicago, the Horween Tannery, the Horween Leather Company. And also, they're the ones that invented Chromexel, uh, which is a pull-up leather, the original pull-up leather. What that means is pull-up leather is if you say you bend the leather, it will lighten in color, and as soon as you release the bend, it goes back to its original color. And it's got a little bit of um, a stretch to it. Not much, but a little bit. Whereas with Shell Cordovan, it's, um, it's a very tough leather. Uh, very, very strong, strong leather. So it, it takes them six months to tan Shell Cordovan. Chromexel, which is another higher-end leather, just, just in relation to show you, it takes 28 days. So big difference. And, um, you know, it, it, the Horween Shell Cordovan out of Chicago right now, I've been looking and looking for it. I, it's it's almost nearly impossible to find, and if you do find it, uh, you know, like there's chips going for seven eight hundred dollars. I'm just not going to spend that kind of money. I mean, the the most I've ever spent on any shell cordovan is three hundred fifty dollars, and you know, yeah, you could get a lot of watch straps out of that, but you sure couldn't get very many wallets. Uh, let alone shoes. I have two pairs of, of shoes that are made of Shell Cordovan. And I'm not going to say how much they cost because my wife watches the show. <laughs> so, But I got them a number of years ago. And yeah, they're, they're Buku Bucks. Um, Shell Cordovan shoes. But the thing is, is, you know, for guys out there, you know how when you walk in shoes and leather shoes, and over time, uh, on, on the top, just up near you, where your toes are, where you, your foot bends as you walk, you get all those kind of creases and, and wrinkles in the leather. Well, Shell Cordovan, you know what? It doesn't do that. Um, that's, that's how amazing Shell Cordovan is. That's why you buy a pair of Shell Cordovan shoes. They're going to last you the rest of your life. You may need to resole them. But that's it. Uh, so you do get what you pay for. And here I'm using my hot foil machine. I have not showcased this on Strap a Watch yet as well. And, you know, some people are really into this. Some people aren't. And I just thought for Greg to make it a little bit more of a classy look for him, I decided to go ahead and put on some gold hot foil, some gold foil for his uh, initial and his, his last name. And then I'm getting ready here to, to uh, emboss my logo into the other side, the back side of the wallet. So you'll see that. But, you know, I know there's also a lot of people have gotten kind of negative with Christopher Ward because of how they changed the font of, you know, the name and the logo and the hands on a lot of their watches. And and personally, yes, I do prefer the old Chris Ward 
underneath the 12 o'clock position, kind of keeping it more symmetrical. That's just me. But I don't mind this new branding that they've done at all. I'm a business owner. I totally understand it. Um, you know, if you're trying to go for maybe a different type of a market and from, you know, what my belief is, I, I don't know this for sure, but it sure makes sense, um, is that they're going after a younger set crowd. Uh, you know, and, and their, old, their old font and their old logo, you know, maybe you could say that it was... It, you know, just kind of looked like a lot of other types of watches. And they wanted to just really do something completely different. And so when you do that, you're going to you're gonna kind of piss a lot of people off. You, you just do. So you have your traditionalists that don't ever want anything to ever change. And then, you know, you have other people that really embrace change. And I, I've had to do it with companies of my own, and I know what that's like. I even did it with my hearing healthcare company. We changed logos after two years in business, and it's scary. You know, I just, I, I had created both. I just, I didn't like the original one, um, and I came up with a new one, and it stuck, and that's, you know, where we're at, but it was completely different. And, you know, it takes time. It's just like redoing an entire website. You know, sometimes that's going to hurt your search engine optimization. And then, boom, you know, you're going to take months before you can kind of get back on top. But it makes it makes sense to me that they were probably doing that rebranding to go after a younger generation of, of watch wearers and enthusiasts. And... One of the things is, to me, is two separate times. One time while I was at, at my office, a gentleman was oh, sitting at least 10 feet away and said to me, um, oh, is that a Christopher Ward? And I said, well, yeah. I said, so you know your watches? And he said, yeah, I have one. I love it. I absolutely love it. He said, well, mine I bought in 2012, so it's the older style. And he was super negative about the new style. But you know what? Because of how it's now positioned, the Christopher Ward name at the 9 o'clock position, he could see it from 10 feet away and he knew exactly what it was. If I had the older model on, he probably would have never even noticed that watch. And dudes, girls do not check out watches man i mean maybe one percent of them really do but um you know who do check out watches on guys or other guys and so i mean it's just from my experience and, and being around the world many times as a pga tour caddy and in my younger days um i've never had a girl one time say anything about a watch i was wearing but I've sure had a number of guys say stuff about watches I've I've had on. So, you know, that's <laughs> just something to think about. If you're trying to impress girls by what watches you're buying, um, you're probably doing it <laughs> for the wrong sex, man. You know, <laughs> I saw him on my favorite watch channel, the Timeless Watch Channel. I talked about him last week. He... He covered this as well on one of his shows. And it was just spot on. I mean, it's completely spot on. You know. Um, you know, like a Christopher Ward watch is a perfect entry level watch for, you know, some guy, especially maybe even a younger guy who is looking for a more affordable, well made Swiss movement watch. Uh, that that is obtainable all right i mean the other rule of thumb would be is save your money save your money and save your money and get yourself a rolex right so here is the final product that's the watch that and the strap i made a few months ago and, and here's the inside of the wallet i think he's really gonna dig it he wanted something real thin and durable he's kind of a biker dude 
So I think I think he's really going to dig it. I hope so. You know, I'm going to see him, like I said, on Monday, and I'm going to give it to him on Monday. But there is my Christopher Ward Trident. I think it's a gorgeous watch. So listen, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Had a lot of fun making his wallet. God bless you all, and until next time, keep on ticking.